All right. Welcome to another episode of Levi in the Closet. Thank you guys for checking out the videos. Before I get started, I'm going to plug myself a little bit here. Like the video and uh, leave a comment even. And uh, also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out. And you can follow me on Instagram at Levi Acid. And you can message me there with any questions or topics that you want to see in my future videos. The goal of my channel is to help you become the best man that you can be. Or if you're a female, maybe you get some insight into uh, the man's psyche, the male psyche. <laughs> so anyway, getting into it. At the beginning of every video, if you haven't seen any of my previous ones, I like to show an item out of my closet. This is pretty dope shirt I got from the Easter Bunny. It was Easter last weekend. I can't even remember. My, my week's been crazy, but um, yeah, I got this from the Easter Bunny. Really dope, 100% rayon, so it's super soft and light. I'm gonna be wearing this during the summer. The weather is starting to heat up a little bit. It's been a real rough winter out here in South Dakota, so I'm ready to be wearing the summer clothes and just rock this, you know, button down a little bit here, maybe put a chain on underneath there. I'll be out in the backyard doing the barbecuing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really like that, the Disney stuff. I have a lot of different uh, Disney sweaters and any kind of you know, memorabilia I can find at the thrift. And I get that from my mom. She was really into Mickey and Minnie Mouse and she had a lot of different stuff I can remember and really cool like vintage items that you don't normally see. And this, I think you just, you got it at a, like a Target or at a Kohl's or something. And um, I digress. I'm really into that Disney kind of stuff. So that suits me perfectly. And uh, yeah, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. So anyway, getting into the topic of today's video, got my notepad here. <laughs> a little bit more about me. I'm really into watching these reality dating shows on Netflix. They have some really good ones to watch. And I like seeing just how uh, the couples interact together. And I like seeing how the men specifically handle themselves when it comes to women and the different situations that come up. And, you know, how, how are they as far as what I consider to be the standard of like, would I do this in the situation if I was there? Do I agree with the decisions they're making or what they're saying? You know, different things like that. I, I kind of compare and I do some takeaways from that. I see, well, that obviously, you know, they mess that up, you know, they're being way too emotional or they're just not handling it right. You know, not being in their masculine frame, being too feminine and submissive and just letting the woman walk all over them, different things like that. You know, you realize watching these shows and I get it. It's for entertainment purposes, but I think a lot of this also kind of ties into the current state of mind for a lot of guys. And I think we need to get away from this. And when I watch a show, I can, you can always tell, at least I can, who is like the, who's the alpha, who's the, the guy that every woman would love to be with. Like he might not be every woman's um, perfect match or whatever, but you know, he's the one that he's dominant, he's stoic and thoughtful, and he's <laughs> guiding the relationship. All the women, they all, they all agree. They're like, oh man, he's so sexy and blah, blah, blah. But like, they know, okay, he's in a relationship with her. I'm going to kind of back off, but they all know that he is the, he's the dominant one. And, uh, usually you can see that in pretty much every, every season or every, uh, different, different show that they have on Netflix. There's usually at least one and maybe, maybe two, but at least one dominant male there that I can see, like he cares about his body, cares about his mind, treats the woman right. You know, if they get into an argument, he knows how to de-escalate it. He knows how to do things that, you know, not every guy probably has the experience in. He probably has been through quite a bit to get to where he is, done the work on himself to get, you know, become better, become a better man. And then now he's ready to date. Now he's ready to be there. And all the women can see that and are attracted to it. <laughs> so I digress. Uh, the new season I'm watching currently, it's Love is Blind, which is a show I really like to watch and they just came out with this new season very interesting because a lot of these I do not agree with there's one couple and I'll get to that later that I do agree with I think they're a strong couple and I think you know they hit it off and I'm curious to see how they work through things like if they're gonna have any kind of problems arise because it seems like they've been doing really well so far they haven't focused a lot on them because there's other ones that are you know in more drama there's couples that are being way more emotional and crazy. And this is just a couple that are just kind of chilling, 
Like it seems like they found the right person and so they're not focusing too much on that. They want the drama. They want to see, you know, people getting upset and whatnot and crying and getting all emotional. Again, I digress. So I'm going to run through the couples here and then I'm going to talk a little bit about each one and what I took away from watching so far being, you know, four or five episodes into it now. So the first couple I was going to talk about or that, I'm, that I want to talk about is Irina and Zach. So Zach, he seemed like a very, when they're in the first situation, when they're in the pods and they're talking to each other, he seemed like he really knew what he wanted and he's got his, you know, he's got it together. He knows what he's looking for. But then as he was uh, dating, he got into kind of a, a complex situation. There were two girls that he was really interested in that were pursuing him. And one of them seemed very mature. She seemed to me like wifey material. And I would have definitely like just talking to her and seeing, you know, just the way that she acted, the way that she carried herself. I think that is a woman, you know, and the other one that he ended up going with that I do not agree with, she seemed much more immature. And the other girl even warned him about, warned him about this and said, you know, she's just trying to create drama. You know, she, she was trying to get the guy, you know, like a lot of girls will say things just to get the guy, but then they're not going to treat you right after, you know, and the other girl, the one that he didn't pick, was just like, you know what, he's going to make his choice. And she was very mature about it. And I think that's what a woman needs to be like, you know, not saying all these things and kind of throwing some shade. There was a point where it was his birthday when they were in the pods, the, Zach, his birthday. And the girl that he didn't choose was making him cupcakes. And she remembered and she was in there baking and getting everything ready. She's like, oh, I want this to be special for him. And, you know, you could tell that she actually cared. And I was like, man... Just think about that, like, if this woman, you know, like, if you marry this woman, she's going to take good care of you, you know, in all aspects. She seems like a very, very good woman. <laughs> and then, on the other hand, the one girl that he ended up going with totally forgot, and she ended up admitting that she even forgot that it was his birthday at all. She's like, oh, I feel bad. Happy birthday. And she only really remembered because the other girl was making such a big deal about it. And I think that's just messed up. And he ended up going with her anyway. The girl that forgot it was his birthday and didn't do anything for him and to me just because i i could see what they looked like you know the the girl they didn't pick was much more attractive the other one seemed very immature and especially not not look wise that it matters and that's what they're trying to prove is that looks don't matter it's more about the connection that you form but i do think that's important you know and then when they end up seeing each other it seems like they're both kind of disappointed. Like they don't kiss. They're not super excited to see each other, especially from the girl. She doesn't seem happy with him. Like she expected him to look like something different. And she's like, well, maybe we'll kiss and maybe we won't, you know, but it seemed like I can picture it in my head. Had it gone the other way, had he picked the girl that made him the cupcakes that they would have been like an immediate embrace. They could have really hit it off right away and they would have been very passionate and it could have been really great, you know? So I'm curious to see if they reconnect or what happens, but you know, just watching them, I was very upset at Zach, at the guy, because you know, he made the wrong decision. He's like, oh, I'm going with my gut. I'm going with how I feel. Like not using any logic, you know? That's what you gotta shift out of. Instead of talking about how you feel, use some logic, you know? This girl made you cupcakes. This girl is talking to you and being, she's telling you, take your time. I'm not gonna press you, you know? I'm not gonna press you to make a decision, things like that. And the other girl just seems like immature, just wanting to start drama, trying to get a guy because this other girl is uh, so involved and she cares so much, you know? Just trying to steal a man just to say that she could, you know, and to prove it. And that's probably where her looks come into play. She's probably very um, self-conscious and doesn't have a lot of confidence. And so she'll uh, artificially create that by trying to steal a man and, you know, doing and saying things that she might not follow through on. So, so yeah, I was just really disappointed with that. They end up flirting and, uh, or, I mean, the girl ends up flirting with another guy that's in another couple. And she's like, well, I wish it would have worked out with him. I should have pursued him instead. And I'm very attracted to him. And he's already in a couple and she's just all over the place. And then they end up, now they're not even going to be together. They decided to call it quits. So that was the first couple. <laughs> hopefully you got a little bit of an idea. If you haven't watched the show, uh, hopefully you get an idea of what I'm trying to convey here. So moving on to the next couple, Marshall and Jacqueline. 
Um, they seem like they're good people individually. I don't know if that's necessarily right, the right coupling. Like, they get along, and it seems like they're going to be friends. I'm curious to see where that progresses to. Marshall seems very emotional, and he talks about that, and, like, crying, and... You can just see it in his eyes that he's an emotional person. So maybe like if he gets upset, he might probably, he'll probably get shouty and probably get very in his feelings about things and not remain stable. Um, Jacqueline seems like she's very mature, you know, like another wifey, if she's treated right, if she finds the right guy, you know, like she seems like she's got a good head on her shoulders and, you know, looks don't hurt either. She's pretty attractive. You know, those Latinas, I don't know what it is about them. Like, like. I don't want to date them because they kind of got that fiery thing. But now I'm, you know, now that I'm more um, in my masculine, like I understand women more, like I know how to treat them and how to, uh, how to control, control situations to put it that way. Um, man, those Latinas, they got nice booties. They got, you know, strong draw lines. I don't know what it is about them, but <laughs> does it to me. And uh, Jacqueline, I think she's a good woman, but she even says it herself, she's more attracted to like the bad boys type, you know, because she's, she could um, try to take the power in the relationship. Like she'll probably be the one wearing the pants. Marshall will probably be the submissive one. And there's a point when they're out of the pods that she's crying and she's talking about drama at home and he's just kind of standing back and then he's like trying to hug her and comfort her and like, oh, what can I do? You know, just standing back and, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I think it's good to be comforting to your woman. There, go, there goes the alarm. It must be 930. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. Um, she's crying and then he's just giving her space and she goes in the closet and, you know, closes the door of the closet. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know, he needs to do something and man up. And he's just like, oh, what do you need? Like trying to comfort her. And <laughs> as, as messed up as it may sound, this is how I would have handle the situation you know you got to get her mind somewhere else you know like get her uh distracted so i would have just picked her up right then like i would have done something like they're in the bathroom you're you know in close proximity pick her up and you just like passionately just like start kissing her and then just like getting her aroused you know like shifting her mindset because there's that emotion there and you can you know use that and so that's just what i would have done i would have gone i'd have thrown her on the bed i would have been like this is no time to be upset and you better wipe your face because we're about to do it. You know, like something, something a little bit more romantic than that. <laughs> but I just think that the way I would handle the situation compared to how this guy handled it, you know, it's not the most dominant of ways. And there are times when she will need comfort, but over something so small and when you're trying to enjoy each other, just be like, you know what? And, and, um, a side note, they've already had sex, I believe, and so this isn't anything like, oh, this is the first time they're going to have sex is when she's all upset. But, you know, they've been having sex. They're on this vacation together. You just be like, look, we're here to enjoy the vacation. We're going to get lost in each other. I'm here to distract you. Let's just enjoy it. We'll worry about the drama later. You know, let's just have a good time together, you know, and then just like pfft, really passionate, heated sex, like lovemaking or, you know, uh, straight... I don't want to say it because I try to keep this PG for the kids, you know, but, uh, you're just going right at it, you know, smashing in the bedroom. <laughs> so, uh, I'm curious to see how they turn out. So anyway, moving on to the next couple, Tiffany and Brett, I mentioned them earlier. They are what I see as a strong couple because she talks about being a little bit older, but through women being older, maybe not all of them, but they become older and wiser. They know how to treat a man at this point. They've been through things. They've, you know, worked on themselves. They're, you know, they know what they want in whatever form that is. And so I think that that's important. Like I've been out with a lot of women that are older than me and I've come to find that a majority of them are very mature and they know how to treat me. They want somebody that's going to reciprocate They'll match your energy. So you treat them right. They'll treat you right. You know, it's not about games. It's not about, you know, trying to make each other jealous. And like when we're upset, we're just going to fight and shout. We want to, you know, come to come to a good conclusion. We want to talk about things. And when problems arise, we can talk through it because we're the ones that are supposed to have each other's backs. We can get through it, even if we don't agree. Uh, a lot of these things. And I think that they're at a point where they can do that and be a strong couple. I don't know about him because he's very stoic and quiet, 
but I think that's also part of it. He's got a very good masculine frame. He's worked on his body. He's very fit. And all the other girls are talking about how good he looks and stuff and how sexy he is. He's stoic. He's like a shoe designer. He's like the head of the design company, which is amazing. That's like one at one point in my life, that was my dream to be like the head of a design um, company for shoes. And he, he did that. He worked hard, got out of a rough position and got himself into a better life. And, you know, is working on himself from what I've seen. And that's amazing. You know, that's the right way to do it. Despite everything that he'd been through, he's, you know, in a better place because of it and now he's ready for a woman you know this isn't something he sees like i need this it's like i'm ready for this you know you, because a lot of people say like oh i need a husband i need a wife you don't need that that's something kind of extra you know like i could live my whole life on my own because i can afford to i'm in a good mental place you know but then you know i'm ready for it you know this is the next step like i i'm ready to care about somebody i'm ready for the responsibility of taking care of another person a lot of these things, you know, like, it's not just about that you want it, you know, uh, you have to go through things, you have to work on yourself a lot, you have to get to that point where you're ready to be with somebody, because a lot of these people are not ready, and it ends up not working out, or they're in a toxic relationship, and they're bitter towards each other, or they're together for a long time, and slowly, you know, uh, yes, they're together, and they love each other, but that doesn't mean they're in a good relationship, but I think these guys are a good example of Two people that have worked on themselves enough to the point where they're ready for this, you know, not that they're desperate for it because then they would just be trying in vain. They're looking for things to fulfill them. They're already both self-fulfilled. They both have enough going on and, you know, they're good looking people. They make a good looking couple. They have, you know, similar energies. Like they're both kind of goofy, even though he's more, you know, masculine. Like you can be goofy and masculine. It's okay. But uh, again, I can't praise this couple enough. And so I'm really interested to see where they go. And I'm hoping that they stay together because they, they look fantastic to me. Okay, moving on to the next couple, Chelsea and Kwame. So uh, Kwame, the man, he uh, was in this situation in the pods where he was going after one girl and she rejected him and then ended up getting in a couple with another one, another uh, another guy that is in the final couple that I'll talk about shortly here. Uh, and he was very bent on this. He was about to propose to her in the pods and then she told him that it wasn't gonna work out and she kind of ended it with him. And uh, he was seeing another girl that, you know, was, he, she was very interested in him and he could have probably given her more because she seemed like she was there and she's she knows what she wants. I feel like this woman, she's a woman, you know, she knows what she wants. She knows how to talk things through. They go through a couple things like um, after they get out of the pods, they're all on their vacation. Kwame and this other girl that he was initially interested in, they're talking and flirting and touching and laughing. And, you know, they're sitting together having a conversation for a long time. And you can tell that, uh, uh, what's her name? Chelsea. You can tell that she's very upset by this. She doesn't go over there and try to interfere and make a big scene about it. I feel like because she knows like not, not anything good is going to come of that, you know, like just chill, like take your time and then come back later. Like, I think that's good. They came back later, had a conversation later that evening, and then they talked about it. So it wasn't in the moment trying to make a big scene. And then everybody gets all upset. They were able to talk about it. She addressed things that made her upset and that she didn't think was right. And, uh, you know, I think that's huge because not a lot of people can do that. Just have the self-restraint to be like, you know what, we'll talk about this later. And so I, I give praise to Chelsea for doing that because that's a mature thing to do instead of going over, like, yes, you could go over and there are ways you can do that. Just like grab by the shoulder and just like say something and just be like, Hey, like, come over here and blah, blah, blah. Or like, Hey, I got something to show you over here or whatever. Or I don't know something that's not like, Hey, get off my man. Hey, what are you doing over here? Why are you talking so long? Like making a bunch of drama about it. Like there are ways you could just kind of pull them aside and just be like, Hey, you know, you're done talking. <laughs> but, uh, talking later, I think having the conversation, um, a little bit later was good. Kwame, I think he, he's a little bit conflicted because of these two girls. He was initially attracted to this one and she's, she's pretty attractive, like physically, but I think Chelsea, like, also a beautiful woman but not as as uh i guess socially seen as 
um, as beautiful. Like all um, all the people on there are beautiful people. They got to be. They're on TV, right? But um, not not physically my type. Kind of a slimmer nose, you know, thinner lips. I like kind of plump, juicy lips. But this isn't about me. This is about the show, right? <laughs> so um, so they probably have some things to get through. If he can just kind of get his mind right and be like, okay, I'm gonna focus on my wife. The drama here and we don't need to come to any more conclusions like there's no more resolve there doesn't always need to be um a resolution to problems and stuff and he's trying to get this closure from this other relationship when he's in one right now when they're in you know um, they're about to get married they're their fiance and you know that's that's not necessarily right like Yes, he could have had a conversation. They talk about this on the show. They could have had a briefer conversation. They didn't have to make it so lengthy and they're like flirting and talking and people getting upset about it. Um, and you just watch the show because they talk about it, obviously. But there are things that he could have done differently. And it seems from what I've seen so far that he now understands that. And I think he also needs a little bit of time to mature just the way I see him interacting and he was getting upset about it. He's also a very emotional person, I can tell. So that probably will come up later. Like he seems a little hot headed, you know, you got to be able to stay in your masculine frame. Like don't get all upset. Just kind of take, take that space and just be like, okay, I need to think about this or whatever you got to do. Don't get so upset that and then you're yelling and screaming at each other. You're the one that's supposed to be the dominant, relaxed, stoic, you know, all these things. Like you can logically talk about it. You don't have to get upset. And it seems like he's, he's, gets upset easily <laughs> so yes i'm curious to see how they end up in this show despite um chelsea's maturity <laughs> so anyway getting to the final couple i'm going to talk about here micah and paul they don't show paul too much it seems like he it's hard for me to gauge how he is because he seems like on one hand he's very mature but then he's also flirting with the the first girl i talked about Irina. They have things in common, they're kind of flirting, and he's like, you know, touching her, like doing these kind of playful things. And I'm just like, I know you're kind of like, you're kind of entertaining her a little bit. You're not just saying like, hey, back off, you know, and he's, he's entertaining her. So I don't think that's necessarily mature when he's supposed to be in this relationship. And I think he's a good guy. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. My more concern is towards Micah because of the way that she's talking to Kwame. Like after seeing him, I think then she was more attracted to him and a little bit jealous. And so she's trying to say these things to him, like throwing a little bit of shade, like, oh, you know that I really cared about you and I could have been right for you and blah, blah, blah. It's like, she's the one that rejected him. Why does she keep talking to him? You know, like if you get rejected, like if I get rejected, I don't expect the girl to keep trying to flirt with me. It's like, you reject me. Okay, you're gone. You're out of my life. Um, or if I reject somebody, you know, I don't keep hitting them up and saying things, you know, like, and that's what I just think is ridiculous because it seems like now she's jealous and she was trying to get him into that, you know, in that position, a vulnerable position, which I don't think is right at all. I think she might be a little bit immature and her, Micah and that first girl, Irina, they're both pretty close friends. And I think it's because of their immaturity and maybe their age, but they're, they're, both immature compared to all the other women in the show they're all the other ones they get together they get together in their little groups and they have conversations it's usually Irina and Micah and then uh Jacqueline and Tiffany and Chelsea and you know all the women will get together and then all the girls will get together and that's kind of the difference and you can see that dynamic that they're immature she might not be ready for a relationship like most girls they want a relationship so badly they want a man they want to be in a relationship it's so cute and i want to have somebody to be with like okay that's there's nothing wrong with that but again you have to go through things you have to work on yourself and become more aware of your actions and your um your effect on other people like she in talking to kwame completely disregarded chelsea and did not consider her feelings at all like if she really cons was you know concern for her she'd say okay you know they're in a relationship i have respect for her i'm not gonna be flirting with her man because they're in a relationship you know that's just kind of how it is be respectful be mature and adults about it but she's over there trying to kind of win his attention and flirting and all these other things and so i don't think that's right i'm curious to see how they end up 
I don't know if they're really a good match. Like, it seems like they can be good friends and they're playful together. They have fun. And, of course, they're on a vacation. They're doing fun things together. But I feel like Paul, he might not be interested because that might not be his typical type. I don't know where he is as far as maturity because they don't show him too often. Like, if they showed him and, like, how he is, then I might have a better gauge on it. But they don't really focus too much on him. Um, but just seeing him interacting with that other girl, Irina, kind of gives me an idea that, you know, he's more of like the player type. Like he could go out there and just be flirting with girls all the time. And I don't think he's ready to just be locked down. That's just my, you know, my brief assessment. So the video went a little long. This is a lot to cover because it's, you know, a very big deal. All these different couples and how they interact together. So I'm going to wrap it up with this. <laughs> If you're a man and you want to be with a woman, you need to remember to stay calm because fights happen when both people, you know, you get your emotions escalated. You need to be calm, be stoic, and it's okay to, you know, have emotions. It's okay to talk about how you feel, but don't get too, you know, emotionally invested into that. You know, you still need to have some control and resolve. Don't be all, all over the place and you know you can just talk about it you know just talk it through tell your person how you're feeling when the time is right you don't need to always be talking about how you feel because that's what some guys do they just always want to talk about how they feel make sure if you're you know dating or you're trying to find the right person make sure that you understand who the other person is because like in that first couple with zach the uh, the girl that he was um also considering her name was Bliss, you know, I think they could have been a really great couple. That was a great woman. Any guy would be lucky to have her as a partner because of how amazing she is and like willing to bake and she knows how to bake and the other girl, I'm sure she doesn't even make food. All these other things, you know, like not to slam anybody, but really like this seemed like a quality woman and you have to learn about that and like, okay, are they going to take care of me? Like go through things like, you know, what do they do for her on your birthday? Do they remember your birthday? Do they even know when your birthday is? <laughs> Different things like that. You just need to take the time. And so, yeah, just get to know your person. Make sure you make the right, <laughs> the right decision. Check out Love is Blind and kind of compare that to what you do when you're dating and maybe improve yourself a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up here. And as always, love yourself before anybody else. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.